Thank you to Rosh Hashiva for inviting me here to speak today. Why, Rabbi I would like to start off by saying that it is my greatest honor and pleasure to stand here in front of you today, in front of the Rabbanim, in front of the Talmidei Chachamim, and to be representing one of the most beautiful points in the world, Yeshiva Salamana It is my greatest honor to stand here in front of you today and to represent the Rabbeim who give all their might, who have 100% Messier Snefesh, to teach these boys day in and day out. It is my greatest pleasure to represent the great Rosh Hashiva. And I don't know if anybody here knows what kind of love, what kind of power it takes to run a yeshiva. The great Rosh Hashiva, our Kleinman, if I would just, just touch the tip, the tip of what it means of what he goes through every day, what it means to go to a place to a community where you don't know their culture, where you don't know what they like, you don't know their food, you don't know their capabilities, and to take them off the streets, to bring them to yeshiva, and teach them what's Shabbos, to teach them what's tefillin, to teach them what's tzitzit. I heard a beautiful story once, and I have to share it with you today. One of the great tzaddikim in Europe, his name was Rav Michle Mezolchov. Rabbeim Betari, Yidn Stein, Bamek, Zal, Von Zechelus, Er Zendu, Noch, Du, A Bissl, Platz, Du, A Hezi, Noch, Nisch Stein, Bam, Tier. Es ist schwer, er hat sich keinen Zicke, mit Zemäulen, mit Servieren, mit Metallen, Beit, Varangenen, Aranzieren, und Zal, Steuer. Thank you. One of the great tzaddikim of Europe, Rav Michle Mezolchov, who for most of his life was a tzaddik mister. One day, he reaches one of the cities in Europe and nobody knew who he was. And he wanted a place to sleep. He walked around, his clothes were dirty, it was raining outside. And whose house do you go to? You're gonna bother the shoemaker? You're gonna bother the gvir? He goes to the biggest house in the city. He knocks on the door. The Gvir opens up. He sees a Rebbe, a rabbi walk, standing outside. Can I have a place to sleep? No place to sleep. And he closes the door on him. He goes from house to house. Is there any place to sleep? Nobody lets him in. Finally, he reaches the tailor's house. Small house, maybe two rooms. One for the kids and one for the husband and wife. He says, is there a place for me to sleep tonight? Right away the shoemaker, the tailor opens up the door, says, come in, come in, I have a place to sleep. I have a warm bed. What are you, any less than the Evan Ivory? And Evan Ivory, you have to give him the, the steaks, you have to give him the bed, you have to give him everything. Are you any less? Come inside, I have a place to sleep. He comes inside, he sleeps. One of the greatest and warmest nights of his life. Many years later, Rav Michal Mazolchev became the great Admor, and he had hundreds of Hasidim. He goes back to that city. He hasn't even walked into the city, and already the whole city goes out to welcome him. The same Gvir who closed his door that night goes up to Rav Michal and tells him, Hi, Rav Michal, you're sleeping in my house tonight. It is the minhag of the city that the Gvir holds the tzaddik. Rav Michele tells him, no. I'm not sleeping in your house. 
I'm sleeping in the tailor's house. But because you invited me, I'm gonna tell you a nice fort. What's the fort? Everybody was dumbfounded. He tells them, you have two people, Abraham Avino and Lot. Both of them took guests into their house. How come a Kodesh Baruch Hu said to Abraham, you're Abraham Isha Chesed? But by Lot, it wasn't really seen as a mitzvah. So Rav Michla looks at the Kabir and says, when Avram Avinu brought the guests into his house, they were Goyim. He saw them as Goyim. They were strangers, but he still let them into his house. When Lot saw the guests, he saw them as angels. There is no Chiddush to bring angels into your house. Rabbi Sai, the Rosh Hashiva over here, he doesn't open up a yeshiva for Tamidei Chachamim Muflagim. There is no Chiddush in that. The Chiddush is to go deep inside the Klippa and to take in those Nishamos who nobody cares for and to love them, to bring them to your house and to not care and to give them a place to sleep, to take them to Shabbatonim, to take them to square, to take them to a tish. I remember when I was a child, i never forget this in my life. And I met Sadiqim. I went to Yerushalayim. I went to break yeshivas. One of the most beautiful experiences in my life. I went to a tish of the Sklan of a Rebbe. i never forget it. I wish I could rewind my life to that moment. It was the night of Shabbos. And I went to that tish. And I remember singing for an hour. I didn't know what overcame me. It was beautiful. I didn't know what it was. It was a spark of Yiddishkeit. It's like going inside into your neshama and taking out that spark and lighting a fire that you can never forget. That's what Yiddishkeit is. There's no chiddush to open up a yeshiva with hundreds of kol members. There are other people who could do that. Who's going to care for the little people? David HaMelech said, Avon akeva yisubeni. It's the little thing that matters in life. When Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai was taken out of Yerushalayim, when he met Nero Kesar, the Caesar, in Masech Sagitin, Nero said, ask three wishes. He tells him, Ten lich yavne lechachamea. Then he tells him, give me Rabban Gamliel and the Davidic lineage. Tell him, give me Mashiach. And the third thing, what does he tell him? There's an old man named Rav Tzadu. He's 80 years old, he hasn't eaten in 40 years. Give him a doctor. The Mepharshim are going crazy. The Maharsha asks, give him a doctor. Give him Yerushalayim. Give me Yerushalayim. You could have saved Am Yisrael. You could have saved the base of Migdash. Do you know why Rabban Yochanan ben Zakkai was the leader of the Yidin? Do you know why? Because he cared for the little people. He cared for that 80 year old Tana sitting in his house. That's what makes a leader a leader. David HaMelech says, Yemei Shinoteya ben Shivim Shana. Vim Biguros, Shmonim Shana. The Gemara says, you're 100 years old, it's like you're already dead. 70 years we live in this world, what do we run for? What's our tachlis? The Gemara, the Azor HaKadosh, in Parsha Truma, I believe that Kufchav Bey says, what's the greatest mitzvah in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? What's the greatest mitzvah? We might ask ourselves, I want to make Hashem happy. You ever ask yourself that? I want to make Hashem happy. The Zohar asks, Moshe Rabbeinu was the greatest man to ever live. We just read in the week's parasha, last week's parasha, two weeks ago. By Ish Moshe Anav Meot. Moshe Rabbeinu, how come we didn't pick him to be the one of the Avos? How come? What's so special about Abraham Avinu? Ve'et hanefesh asher asu becharan. He made Gerem. He taught them what's Berkas Amazon. He brought guests into this house. He had four openings. People come in, eat, drink. Avram Avinu was Bechir Sheba Avos. Elkanah the Zohar Akadar says in Pachat Truma. Why did he have a boy like Shmuel? Shmuel? The 
Zohar Kodesh says, what was the schus of Shmuel, of Elkanah to have a son like Shmuel? Ki Shiloh, when he would go to Shiloh, he would gather people. He would teach them Torah in a time of judges where nobody knew what Torah was. Rabbi I want to say one more small story. I'm going to end with this. One of the great pre-World War II rabbeim in Europe was the Sfas Emes, Rav Yudha Aryeleib. He was the grandson of the Chidush Arim. His father died when he was eight years old. His mother died when he was six. He was raised by his grandfather, the Chibal Chidush Arim. When he was 18 years old, he found himself as the Admor and the Rebbe of a group of thousands of Hasidim. And every single Hasid over there was a great Tzaddik and a big Talmud Chacham. So one of the Hasidim had the oz to come up to the young Admor and tell them, what right do you have, an 18 year old, that you think you can lead a generation of Talmud Chacham and Tzaddikim? What do you think, you, what right, what do you think that you could give you're just 18 years old. So the Sfas Emes says to him, he wasn't the Sfas Emes yet, but he told him, em mashal lema davar He says, what's the greatest mountain in the world? Mount Everest, in the Himalayas. Imagine a group of men, 10 men come together and say, we want to reach the top. We want to go up there, the Lui Nishmas, we want to say Kaddish over there, we want to put a flag up there, set a record. So they come together and for half a year they strategically plan how to reach the top of this mountain. Thousands of feet in the air, thousands. It's bitter cold in the stratosphere. You can't breathe over there. So they plan for half a year how to get to the top of the mountain. Finally they reach the mountain, all the way in the Himalayas, they reach a third of the mountain, already three people say we can't go up. They go back down. They reach half of the mountain, another three go back down, four left. They reach a third of the mountain, another two go down, two left. Finally they reach the top and only one man makes it. He reaches the top of the mountain and they're drinking Lachayim, they take it, not a Shivas 18, they got a Shivas 24, Johnny Walker Blue. And they're happy and they're saying Lachayim, we reached the top and set a record. Suddenly they smell somebody's making a barbecue. They look around and suddenly they see a young little boy. He's doing, as we say in Hebrew, Alaish. Their mouths are wide open. They come to the boy and tell him, how did you get to the top of the mountain? Journey men couldn't make it up here. What are you doing up here? And the boy starts to laugh. They're getting angrier. He's laughing and they're getting angrier. He tells him, you're making one mistake. You climbed up the mountain. I was born on the top of the mountain. Rabbi said, every Jewish child has the birthright to have a Jewish education. Some people don't understand that. But you do. You understand that. You have the ability to make a Jewish dream come true. I want to read you one letter before I finish. This is a letter a boy wrote to me at the end of the year. A boy that doesn't have so much. But look what a little bit of love could do to a Jewish neshama. He wrote to me, Dear Rebbe, I am so proud to be a Jew. The way a Jew thinks is so different than the way the Goyim think. Ever think about that? We think different than the Goyim. We are a different nation. We're Am Sibula, we're Kedoshim. And when I think of Hashem, I'm in a different world. The mitzvah of tefillin is so precious to me. Every day that I wear it is like the first time. How many times do we wear tefillin? Do we ever think like that? Thank you, Rebbe, for being there for me and for believing in me. If the Midrash says it was worth to create the world for one Amen, it was worth to create the world for this letter. Baruch Adonai Amen. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow.
Mai Tayri desigen a surprise. Kabul işte tatal edilen Hanişlik Light Pazer Deliver Nazar Message.